I think that some of the best wines in the world are actually made right here in Niagara. I think the world is really interested in what Canadian wines are doing. Um, and it's not just ice wine, I think it's also our Rieslings and Chardonnay, Cabernet Franc. Canadian and Ontario wines are really starting to take their place in the world market now. In blind tastings, our wine continue to show above anybody else. That makes me feel very proud. Lindsay Groves. Wine is my passion. As a certified sommelier, educator, and wine consultant, I've had the pleasure of meeting some of the world's finest winemakers. I'm on a journey to discover the personal stories of the people who make wine. What drives them? What motivates them? What sustains them? Today, I'm heading to Niagara, Ontario to meet up with Sue Ann Staff. This is her story. My grandmother was my mentor. She's the one that taught me how to do all the handwork in the vineyard, all the pruning and tying and thinning. And she learned from her mother-in-law as well. So you have this, this um, succession, let's say, of, uh, of knowledge that comes through. The original vineyard was planted in 1899 by my great-great-grandfather and great-great-great-uncle. So when you have something that's, you know, that intense in your family and that, that strong, um, you kind of feel compelled. It's, it's kind of magnetic and, and, it, and it's energetic and you want to be a part of it. And uh, so as time went on, I just want to, be, I want to be a part of it more and more. I was so fortunate to learn so much from my father and grandfather as well. They were both uh, uh, machinists, equipment operators, mechanics. And so at 12 years old, I was driving, uh, driving tractors. And so I learned so much from, from both parts. I was interested in what happened in the vineyard right from the age of seven years old. I would come home on the school bus, looking out the windows, looking for my grandmother's car in particular, so I could uh, figure out where she was working, come home, announce to my mother, Mom, Grandma's at the Beamer Farm or the Jones Farm, whatever the name of the farm was, and uh, drop my bags, hop on a bike, and now I would, I would go to help her. So because of that, I knew at the age of 16 I wanted to be a winemaker. I think being a winemaker was the part that I could bring into the family business that was something new and different. My grandfather was very adamant. We are grape growers and that's what we do. Um, that's our place in life and, and we do it and we do it well. And so that was, uh, that was very ingrained into us, but at the same time, businesses have to evolve. They always have to change. Winemaking is so physical. You're, you're, you're pulling pumps and pushing lines and you're hopping on equipment, and which traditionally haven't been uh, things that women have done. And then also, there's certain times of the year, like through harvest for instance, where you're just running as fast as you can and you're doing 16 hour days back to back to back to back to back. <laughs> and uh, so to have a normal family life, and if you're in the, you know, in the stage of life of bringing up children, it's, uh, it's tough to manage both of them. In the fall when it's harvest, it's about uh, waking up and, um, and planning out the week from there. Uh, so it really is not uh, a, a quiet moment. Uh, I try to carve out a week or two in the winter time, but it's, it's tough to do. It comes at a cost. I consider wine a lifestyle. I think it's something that helps you just just relax and uh, enjoy life as well. And uh, not that you need alcohol or wine to do that, but sometimes it's about just, you know, kicking back and relaxing and, and just good food, good friends, and some good wine to go with it. And that's really, that's really the essence of life, right? If, if at the end of the day, at six o'clock in the afternoon, if you can't relax the glass of wine with some friends and some family and some great food, then, then I don't know. Why, why are we doing this? <laughs> so, and then you have to have a time when you can stop and smell the roses and smell the Riesling and um, enjoy life. <laughs> <laughs>